Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingram in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for February 10th, 2023. There's only one big pre-order I wanted to tell you guys about this week, and that is a new reissue of Albert King's Born Under a Bad Sign. Phenomenal album on stacks. There is an all-analog stereo pressing of it coming out by Kraft. Uh, the Concord, excuse me, not Con not Kraft, Concord. That is scheduled to come out April 21st of this year. So that's available on the website at theingroup.com under the pre-order tab. Huge amount of titles to show you guys this week. We got a double row new arrival video. Some new titles from Analog Productions and also some restocks I'll show you here shortly. Uh, and then there's also, this is mostly new arrivals. There are a couple of restocks here, but for the most part, this is this week's new arrivals. So let me show you what we got here. Starting off with the next concert from the Rolling Stones Vault series, and that is the Rolling Stones Girl Live. This is a 2012 show. This is the New Jersey show. I actually saw them on this tour in San Jose, California. One of the best shows I've ever seen. Uh, John Fogarty, Bonnie Raitt, Mick Taylor was there. He was on all the shows in this uh, tour. But this particular show has a... Uh, Lady Gaga and Gary Clark Jr. Not bad, but I got to see the better show. Uh, John Fogarty was fantastic. Bonnie Raitt did uh, a killer track. It was just fantastic, the interaction between her and Mick. It was a great show. But I love this series, this whole concert series. They're must-haves. The Stones, live, maybe the best band of all time. And this is a triple disc. But, yeah, Gurr. From 2012. Pretty cool cover, too. It's got this die cut going on here. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was a small tour. So uh, they didn't come. I think they did mostly California, East Coast, and maybe California shows. It was maybe eight or nine shows in that range. It wasn't a huge amount of shows. The newest album by Post Malone, 12 Carat Toothache. It comes in two variations. This is the Opaque Lemon Indie Store Exclusive. And then there is a standard black vinyl variant. Okay. Mogwai. Young Team. 1997 debut album remastered on double sky blue vinyl. Had original of this come in quite some time ago and it was going for some bucks. But they are reissuing the Bronx 4. It is 10th anniversary edition on clear vinyl. Bunch of reissues coming out from Atlantic. This is the exciting Wilson Pickett. Reasonably priced, too. They're right around the $20 mark. This is a, a mono, a mono cut. He does uh, Land of a Thousand Dances on here, which is fantastic. Good record. They're finally getting around to reissuing some Whitney Houston. I get asked in the store for her all the time. The fact that this stuff hasn't been in print for years is kind of mind-boggling. But we've got the self-titled Whitney Houston. Includes new photos and fan testimonials of love. Special edition. Pierce the Veal. Pierce the Veil. The Veal. <laughs> I'm hungry. I haven't ate dinner yet. What can I say? Okay. Collide with the Sky. Limited edition indie store record exclusive. Uh, aqua Vinyl. We've got... Holy... Crikey, this is expensive. What the hell is this? Are we there yet? Three records set... From Hillsong United? Whew. I'm going to have to figure out what this is just because it's so damn expensive. Maybe it's an import or something. But yeah. Okay. The Academic Sitting Pretty includes Don't Take It Personally and My Very Best. So yeah. Some more. Pierce the Veal. The Jaws of Life. This is on indie retail exclusive Dreamsicle vinyl. 
Mm. Creamsicles. So good. I haven't had one in a long time. Okay, what does this say? Okay. Pale blue eyes. Souvenirs. This is an indie store exclusive as well. Doesn't say what the color variation is, but indie store exclusive. Does Hanson still sell? This was a big deal when I was a teenager, but uh, apparently they got this new album. It's priced as an album, but it looks more like a box set. It's called RGB, and I'm assuming this is a new album. Yeah, 2022. It doesn't have Umbop on it, so if it doesn't have Umbop on it, I would imagine it's a new record. But uh, yeah, Hanson. Not really a boy band anymore. More like a middle-aged man band. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not making fun of. I'm there as well. All right. Coulter Wall, Western Swing and Waltzes, and other punchy songs. Uh, the third full-length LP from Coulter Wall. And we've got another Coulter Wall album, Imaginary Appalachia. Okay, Al Green, I'm still in love with you. I'm assuming, oh yeah, green smoke vinyl. I was going to say, I felt like this was going to be a color variation because this is something that has been in uh, print from Fat Possum for quite some time. All right, the original motion picture soundtrack of Bella. Press on split pink and blue vinyl. This is the Pop Sensation Edition. I think this is a restock, maybe. Yeah, Bob Dylan, Fragments, Time Out of Mind Sessions, 1996 to 1997. This is the Bootleg Series of Volume 17. What is It's like a random... There's a random sticker on there with a the number four. No harm. Okay. So one, two, three, four LP box set. Time Out of Mind, it's got the new 2022 remix and uh, disc three and four are outtakes and alternate cuts. I got the first couple of those bootleg series uh, box sets, classic records did them, they sound great. You know, I like Bob Dylan. By the time you got to the late 80s, the early 90s, not my favorite, but uh, those early boxes, man, are fantastic. And if you're a Bob Dylan fan, they are really well done. They give you a lot. A lot of value for the money as far as the amount of music you get in them. Uh, start your ear off right. The great Otis Redding sings soul ballads. I actually got a couple of the uh, more popular titles from this series earlier in the year that came out as a restock. Mogwai, Come On, Die Young, the 1999 classic debut on double white vinyl. Cindy Dolfer. Let's see, this is limited edition 2LP on red vinyl. We never stop with special guests, Nile Rogers, Marcus Miller. Yeah. For you smooth jazzers, we've got a little wiffle ball action right here for you. Not my thing, but you know. The Ataris, So Long Astoria Demos. Gold and white splatter vinyl. For Black History Month, they're doing Aretha Franklin's Young, Gifted, and Black. One of my favorite albums of hers. It is really fantastic. Rocksteady might be the best song she's ever done, in my opinion. I really dig Rocksteady. Great tune. Love the bass line on that. It's just perfect. Alice Cooper, limited edition clear vinyl of Welcome to My Nightmare. Aaliyah, this is the ultimate Aaliyah. The second and final combination compilation album. They're in the midst of an entire recamp, uh, you know, a, re a campaign for her reissue campaign. Japanese import on the all analog jazz. I, I don't believe these are analog. I'm almost positive they're not, but they call them the uh, analog jazz collection over there. This is uh, Sony Music, so I'm guessing these are going to be DSD. 
and Burton, Blue Burton. In the process of uh, doing a restock of some Japanese titles, I'll have more of them throughout the week. I show them periodically, stuff I import from Japan. JJ Gray and the Mofro Country Ghetto. This is on Alligator. 19, 2007 album on vinyl for the first time. This time I'm keeping one. Last time I said I was going to take one home, listen to it, forgot to take one home, listen to it. It sold out long before I could get back into the store and grab one. Billy Cobham. This is the Kevin Gray cut, Billy Cobham Spectrum. Fantastic album. This is the Rhino issue. From what I heard from people, sounds fantastic. Kevin Gray cut. I don't know the sourcing, but I don't think it's analog, but it does sound fantastic. Avenged Sevenfold on translucent orange vinyl. Okay, this looked good when I got it, but I don't... Wasn't really much information on the listing. Uh, let's see, uh, Lonnie Liston Smith. This is a reissue. Let's see, it doesn't really give sourcing information. I just was curious because some of these Flying Dutchman titles they've put out have been all analog. So, uh, yeah. One of his be best records. Love Expansions is on here. Great tune. Angel Olsen, big time. This is on opaque pink vinyl. I don't know what this is. I'm thinking this is a color variation of Beck's Hyperspace because this is uh, a couple years old. Actually, I'm not a huge Beck fan. I really dug this record. I was, it was a good time. Really enjoyed Hyperspace. Another Start Your Ear Off right title, Warren Zevon's The Best of Warren Zevon. This is on translucent grape vinyl. Let's see, the Prague Collective. Seeking Peace. Another reissue of Jane's Addiction, Ritual Hood Habitual, Alive at 25. This is a variation. Most of these, they've only done 500 of them, and this might be no exception, but they changed the color. So they'll do 500 red, 500 blue. This is double purple and green splatter vinyl. But they seem to do one of these like every year, and it's out, and then it sells out, and then you wait another year or six months, they'll do another color. Let's see, Aldi Miola, World Sinfonia, Heart of the Immigrants, 2LP on vinyl for the very first time. Now someday my prints will come on this. I've never heard this album. I might give it a listen to. I mean, unbelievable guitar player. And another first time on vinyl, World Sinfonia, 2LP, 180 gram vinyl. These are done by ear. Okay. Lyle Lovett, Joshua Judges Ruth. Feels like a 2LP for sure. This is on Curb Records. Let's see, Paramore, the new studio album. This is the exclusive clear vinyl version. Made in Italy. That's pretty cool. It's got an Atlantic 75 hologram on the front. I've not really seen that hologram used yet. So far I've seen all these more uh, basic holograms. Ray Charles, uh, Rock and Roll. This is the mono cut. I mean, these aren't really reasonably priced. It's tough finding $20 records nowadays. Even these bootleg gray market Spanish labels, you know, your wax time records, they're like 20 to 25 bucks now, and they're not even legitimate records. Paramore, this is the way. So this is the black vinyl version. The other one is the exclusive clear vinyl version in the exclusive on the other one. And some more Pierce the Veil. This is Misadventures on Silver with Red Splatter Vinyl. Friday Music, it looks like, doing the kink, State of Confusion. Yeah, Friday Music. Oh, this is a good album, man. I got one of these. I got an original of these not too long ago. This was a great record. 
Soul, what it is. Great funk, great soul record. Looks like they're doing a reissue. I'm not sure of the label that put this out. Beat goes public? Yeah. What is this? Oh, it has to be. Arthur Vercola, this is a limited edition black and marble vinyl. This is done by uh, Mr. Bongo, Half Speed Master at Abbey Road. I'm not familiar with this out, but I feel like I feel like I've heard this before. I'm gonna have to give this a listen to. This looks really good, and I feel like I've heard this album before, or I have. Uh, I might have a CD of it somewhere in the store. Let's see, Annie DeFranco, living. In a cup, right? Living in a cup? Living in cup? Let's see. I saw her in concert. My my cousin took me to see her in like the 90s. It was okay. She took me to two concerts. I was visiting her for a couple of weeks. She took me to Annie DeFranco and Trey Anastasio. This is 25th anniversary limited edition natural blue swirl. Triple vinyl set. Let's see, Atmosphere, Lucy Ford, includes a digital download. First time pressed on vinyl, 20th anniversary edition. I'm guessing this is Friday music. No, this is a Warner, yeah, Friday music. I, I can just tell if it's like a record that used to be a dollar record and it's $30 record, it's a Friday music release. But there we go, the doobies. The Captain, The Captain and Me. So this is uh, one of those albums that it'll sell. And it used to be a really easy, really cheap and expensive record, but you don't find them and you don't find them clean anyways when you find them. I get them, but most of the time they end up in the dollar box. Avenged Sevenfold, Nightmare. This is a translucent blue vinyl version. Killer restocks from Analog Productions. Angel and Airwaves. This is Stomping the Phantom Brake Pedal. Maybe this is an EP. What is this? Another uh, Atmosphere. This is a book in the back. Interesting. Southsiders. Actually, this is really well done. This is nice. It has a book in the back. And it's this resealable sleeve. You pull the little tab there. This was a Rocktober title years ago, and they actually just put it in a print as a standard issue, it looks like. This is Jane's Addiction, Ritual Hood Habitual, 30th Anniversary Edition, double LP on clear pearl vinyl. Another Start Your Ear Off restock, The Velvet Underground, Loaded, killer album. Sweet Jane, rock and roll, really good tunes. Love The Velvet. Okay, Genesis, this is another Start Your Year Off Right title, Selling England by the Pound. And then they're doing a lot of reissues. Bethlehem is doing them themselves, really. John Coltrane in the Winner's Circle. Uh, let's see, featuring Donald Byrd, Kenny Burrell, Art Farmer, more recorded in September, October 1957. My favorite release of the week, because it is one of my favorite bands of all time, New Order, the Low Life box set. Check it out. You've got the original studio album, a 48-page hardbound book, previously unreleased audio CD. There's a Live in Tokyo DVD, Live in Leuven DVD, Live in Rotterdam, Live in Toronto, Live in Manchester, and then uh, the perfect film and the perfect kiss. So I think I can play DVDs on my PlayStation and very, very low quality sound coming out of my TV because I'm not really a home theater guy. But uh, let's see if I can get a little zoom in on this. Very cool, looking forward to this. Okay, the big one, and I don't know why I didn't really start off with these, but there's a couple of big ones. Let's start off with the wonderful sounds of quality record pressings. <laughs> it's a funny name. 
the very first time somebody asked about this in an email, uh, Alex, who does customer service, is like, I think somebody's messing with us. They keep asking for this wonderful quality. I think they're making a joke. I'm like, no, that's the actual name of it. This is an album that essentially was created uh, to highlight what they do over there at QRP. They're reusing a Thorn sampler that they did at Analog Productions, put it together for Thorns for their anniversary maybe 10, 15 years ago. That sampler was like 600 bucks before they put this thing out. It's a three disc set. It's a hodgepodge of music. It's all over the place. It is fantastic though. This is a killer audiophile sampler. And unlike a lot of the other comps, the wonderful sounds of female vocals, male vocals, and Christmas, this is mostly analog. There's a couple of tracks on here, uh, the Susan Shedesky track, and maybe one of the reference recording tracks that are not analog, but everything else is all analog. This is an exceptional sounding comp, but it's, it's a weird listen, I'll say that, because you've got side one as female vocals, then you've got a classical side. Then you've got a blue side. This is all APO stuff. So this is the uh, Analog Productions label, APO. Then you've got a rhythm and blue side, which is the D side. This is by far the best side of the record because it has an absolute killer sounding version of the theme from Shaft. And I'll take you there. Uh, Analog Productions released them as standalone 45s. But by themselves, I think that Shaft 45, it's a 12 inch 45, goes for the price of this thing. Uh, then there's a couple of uh, Susan Chedesky tracks on it. Then you got two jazz sides, E and F. Sides F, side F is two tracks from the Hugh Masekela Hope album, which is one of the absolute best sounding audiophile jazz records you'll ever hear. The thing is absolutely unbelievable sounding, and they need to reissue it because it's like a $200 record at this point that analog production, but it's not out of print, it's a waiting repress. But the fact that it's going for 200 bucks tells you how good it is. But this is a fun sampler. This is a great record if you wanna show your buddies your system, you wanna show them what vinyl is capable of. You're like, what do you like to listen to? And as long as they don't say rock, you're golden. Cause there's no rock tunes on here. You know, Ricky Lee Jones doing showbiz kids, Steely Dan tune, maybe, but not really. But you can, if they do say rock, that's really your choice. Put that on. Some other Ricky Lee Jones, low spark of high heeled boys, but you know, that's about as rocking as you're gonna get. But this is a great demo disc in every sense of the word. It is fantastic. Okay, Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy, UHQR. It's in stock, had it a week or so, it's now shipping. You know, we're always a little bit delayed on the UHQR, so we finally got it in, and it is now shipping. Oh man, I should run through these two because I also got the first SACD, Can't Buy a Thrill. So they're doing all of them on SACD as well. Got a restock of the Analog Productions Animal SACD, 2018 remix. Remix is the best version of the album in my opinion. 24 Carat Hits, Elvis. We've got a brick of doors here, so Waiting for the Sun, Strange Days, Morrison Hotel, self-titled, Dave Brubeck. This, I think, has a three-track on it as well. So kind of like a multi-channel, three-channel, not three-track, three-channel. Ooh, LA Woman. Good times. Okay. So, yeah, Steely Dan. Then we've got the Roger Waters 45 RPM box set of Amuse to Death. I uh, haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but Amuse to Death is one of my top five demo records for testing new gear because of how spectacular that record sounds. Okay, so let me show you some of the standard restocks. Mighty Sam McLean. These boxes just don't want to stay upright. Okay, this I think is a recent reissue. I think this has been out for quite a while, but they're redoing all the prestige titles, but this one just came back. Eric Dolphy at the five spot. We got both versions of the Dave Brubeck uh, Quartet Timeout. This is one of my five demo discs as well. I mean, the single sided side of Take Five is unbelievable. And if you want to hear how your system images, this is the record to do it with. Sounds fantastic. 
They do it in 33 as well. 45 is actually on my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list. Unbelievable. Amos Lee. Duke Ellington, Blues in Orbit. I actually listened to the ORG version of this the other day. Great record. Fun, accessible. Good recommendation. Tony Joe White, Homemade Ice Cream. This is the 45 RPM version of it. Sarah McLaughlin, Afterglow. Shakostovich, Cello Sonata. Original RCA Living Stereo. Record goes for absolute huge money if you find an original. It's like a $500 record. I think originally, if I'm not mistaken, this was a Dynaflex. Is this one of the Dynaflex? There's a couple of, uh, not Dynaflex, the, uh, God, I'm having a brain fart. The equalized stereo crap that RCA pulled. Almost none of those are worth anything, but there's a couple of them that actually are Dynagroove. There we go. There's a couple of them that actually are. If it's not this one, it's right around this uh, series number. There's a couple of these Dynagrooves that are worth some money. But uh, they put a, like a weird equalization on there to make your crappy turntable and stereo sound better. Maybe that was fine in the you know the early 60s. Now we don't need that, at least when they do the reissues. They're not Dynagroove anymore. But uh, very high dollar record if you find an original living stereo. It's one of the few living stereos that still goes for huge money. A lot of them have come down in price. But all of these living stereos just sound fantastic. Some of the best classical music ever, as far as, you know, from an audiophile standpoint. Highly sought after today. One of those American labels, this and the Mercury Living Presence that they've been collecting, you know, uh, audio files have been collecting for decades. A stereo spectacular. Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue. If you know uh, you just want to get into some classical, this is a great place to start. You've heard this music many, many, many times, so you'll be familiar with it. Ricky Lee Jones, It's Like This. This actually has Showbiz Kids on it, which is kind of you know, you get that track on that QRP sampler. Oscar Peterson's West Side Story. One of the other really high-end uh, living stereo titles, if you find an original. Also, Sprock Zarahustra, Richard Strauss. Fantastic record. Used at the uh, 2001 Space Oddity. And more importantly, throughout the 70s by Elvis as he walked onto stage. All right, Jethro Tull, Stand Up. This is a 45 RPM. They actually did it where, just like the original, it opens up and the little figure, you know, the cardboard stand up pops up. The 33 RPM of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Instep. You guys can search analog productions by label. So if you go to the top, you can search the audio file labels out. So if you want to look at everything that's available, Analog Productions, Mobile Fidelity, Speakers Quarter, you can look at that stuff. And there's also search functionality where you can check a box and only see what's in stock. Because unfortunately, a lot of these audio file records are still out of stock. John Coltrane with the Red Garland Trio, another prestige series title. Very, just absolute dynamite. All analog, cut by Kevin Gray. That whole prestige, they did 50 of them, 25 monos, 25 stereos. They're all killer. Lightning Hopkins, the blues of. John Coltrane, 7105. Self-titled, technically. I refer to it as 7105. Unbelievable album, Saxophone Colossus. Great record. There's a killer version of... Uh, Moriot, which is Mac the Knife. Really dig this record. Highly recommend this. Of course, if you're a jazz guy, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, it's a good place to start. That's a great record. Heifetz. Let's see. Another living stereo title. The most expensive non-box set, because the Royal Ballet would be the big dollar one. But Faust. With that that devious looking devil on the cover. It's like a thousand dollar record to this day. 
in the 90s. I want to say that was probably a $2,000 record. Respighi, the Pines of Rome, one of the best sounding living stereos to this day. This is for the audio fidelity, for the audio, excuse me, not all fidelity, audio fidelity is an old label. For the audio, yes, the audio fidelity of this, this goes for big money. Uh, Respighi has never been one of my favorite, but this is good, but the sound quality on this is fantastic. Originals of this are what, five grand? So you probably want to try to hunt this one down, which is the uh, analog production copy of Quiet Kenny. All analog cut from the master tape. Save you, you know, 4,960 bucks. And a lot of waiting around for that nice clean original. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood. This is the 45 RPM version, all analog. The 33 RPM of Belafonte Sings the Blues. This absolutely dynamite Herbie Hancock Headhunters album with the, I guess you'd call it the hit version of Watermelon Man. It was on his first album as well on Blue Note. This is the version everybody knows. Jimmy Witherspoon's Roots. Tenor Madness, Sonny Rollins. This is his other great album for Prestige. Although uh, Saxophone Colossus of this era is probably considered his masterpiece. For me, Way Out West is my favorite album of his. And actually, this might be the one that I'm going to have to go home and look now. My mind is eluding me. There's a couple of these late RCA titles that are on Dynagroove vinyl, vinyl that go for some bucks. Maybe not this one. And a Heifetz. Sir Malcolm Sergeant Conducting. And I got a restock of the Niles Lofgren Acoustic Live box set. This is a four disc set. I think this is at 45 RPM, yeah. Yeah, 45 RPM. All right, guys, all of this stuff can be purchased online at the website at theingroove.com. Until next time.